Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Playframe and Beacon Pines. We're back. We're back. I had to wait for weeks, or at least a week. <laughs> it's been terrible. Let's play yeah. a game. <laughs> Let's do it. It's not often that we're playing a game where Carrie is just, like, noticeably impatient for the next recording session to happen so, so we can play more. But I understand. Last week was terrible because it was Dan's. <laughs> it was not terrible. It was great. We do all, but, we alternate our recording schedules. So like one weekend, Dan and I will record two or three episodes. One weekend, Carrie and I will record a couple. And then, yeah, so. Yeah. It's a long wait. It is. But now we've got to go to a mansion and pretend to be friends with someone who is our friend, sort of, but in the future in a different timeline. <laughs> that sounds right. Who was that stranger? I don't think we've seen them before. Actually, yeah, now that you mention it. They do look different. Hello? Good morning, Jeff. What's so good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Oh, come on now. It's not all bad. The festival's coming up. Huh, the festival. Old man Valentine used to put in on cockamamie shindigs all the time. And where did that get us? Well, it's perennial harvest putting on this one. And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I can see it. The difference between the old Valentine Company and this new perennial harvest outfit. Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. Is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. <laughs> but those are both garbage. Exactly. That's excellent. I'm going to go this way. Which I'm Ooh. not sure is the right way, but I'm going to go. Can we go I, here? It is hmm. the right way. I think you're right. Because... The split is here. Oh, yeah, and here we're going to go this way yeah. now. Yeah. And there's back. Hello. We've done it. Excellent. So who all lives in that house? Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved in a few years back. That creepy kid in the vest? That sounds like the one. So just three people live in that huge thing? I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens in that in a place that happens all the time in a place like that. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring. Pretty much. What a waste. My mom says that it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the foul harvest. Okay, that's like the fifth time someone has mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually, you're going to have going to explain to me how that harvest ended. I can read. Eventually, you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. But I also want... Oh. I know. I also want this information. <laughs> I got so distracted by wanting the, the, the story that I couldn't <laughs> read the words. Most could... Most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle that. Beck took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. What kid has ever brought up their friends' parents' jobs? That's true. I don't think I did ever ask that sort of thing about my friends' parents, nor did I have any interest in knowing. Yeah, I'm trying to think of friends that I had back in school, and I have no clue. Like, I kind of have interest now just as a, like, a curiosity of, like, what on earth did their parents do anyway? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Weird. Here goes nothing. Chapter 4 Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. Weird. I'd looked it up and I'd thought that, and I'd seen that the pronunciation I thought was Ilona. <laughs> or oh, Ilona. But or maybe I'm thinking of the wrong person. Between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. 
Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. Nice garden metaphors. So, Luca... <clears throat> wait, what was her voice? I don't remember. Uh, there's so many of them. There's so many. So, Luca, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I, I live with my grandma. Over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck, manners. It's all right. My dad passed away in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh, dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like, missing, missing? Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally, we'd have put more effort into dinner. Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry. Are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck! I'm sorry, Luca. This move has us all a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. So, Beck said that you moved here for work? What, what, what did she say? What was the, the one table? thing? Oh my goodness. No, Luca. I guess this is a little bit of revenge. <sighs> Ow! <laughs> I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? <laughs> oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nellie wouldn't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her their newest lead research of deep engineering. Lead researcher of deep engineering. She makes it sound more impressive than it is. I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture. Into something more useful than sprinkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nellie means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. And some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. You swore you Beck didn't. slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Hey, Luca! How about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rolo soon. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you for all the pizza. It was really good. See you at the festival, Beck. She's going with. Go with. Go with. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to... Rumble or break. Mm. Mm. Rumble, because break would mean rain. Rumble it is. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. If it rains, then she'd have to stay back home and wouldn't be able to go with us. So. Uh, you sure we can make it off? You sure we can make it home before this storm kicks off? Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break for it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing Oof. torrential rain. Well, we're both soaked now anyways. Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch cold. Sleepover? Sleepover. Heck yeah. Luca, 
Nelly will try will keep trying to reach your gran on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Well, okay. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. Oh, I will. <laughs> what do you have? Investigate. Lucas squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the structural integrity of gum with increasing amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 days. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. It's weird, I know. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Aw. Radio. Oh, yes, radio. Oh, wow. Rolo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. <laughs> Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Filled it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech overcompensation. Luca flicked at one of the toggles. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Ah, shucks. Flower bouquet? Oh, yeah. Curious about that, too. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Maybe from friends where she lived before or that something. That could be, yeah. He flipped open the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding around about poking. You weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, was this from your old school? The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards. Some did flowers. When they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you've moved a lot. Yeah. That's the thing with having a brilliant parent. There's always some better job somewhere else. Hmm. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them, is all. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Dang, didn't that hurt? Oh, buddy. No, it doesn't hurt. I used to do that all the time. <laughs> I'll be honest. That hurt more than I expected. Well, at least you looked cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when other people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like... Your family doesn't care what you want. Um, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at... A problem? Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet. But one thing my dad told me when I was little, don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. Mm. If you try to hold it all in, you're going to pop. <laughs> so then, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Dad never got to that part. Something I've figured out on my own, though. You got to do something. Anything. Here. <laughs> What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We're going to register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe. 
Stop jerking me around. I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone tells me it's going to be all right. That things are going to change. Luca let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town. Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks. I hate it. I hate that I hate it. Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? Her voice dropped to a trembling whisper. I just want to be a normal kid. Beck brushed off her shirt and straightened up. There. Wow, I, I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Thanks. I needed that. Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure. I'll walk you out. See you and Rolo at the festival? Sounds good. Luca. Don't let the universe jerk you around. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Chapter 5. Friendly Feud The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. The smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone. Not mm. even Rolo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. There's different kinds of friends. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's... After the foul yeah. harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Hmm. It's a beautiful little cottage. Oh, it's gone. Well, Don. look who is here. Hey, Don. Tracking down a lead? You bet. I heard a juicy rumor. I heard a juicy new rumor. Turns out when Sharper Valentine died, he left behind a peculiar last will and testament. Peculiar how? He didn't just give his kids an inheritance. There are conditions. Like what? The document stipulated that Eris had to take on a child as her ward. A kid our age who just showed up in town one night with a lawyer. Solomon? Bingo! So Eris was forced to take care of him. Yep, or she would have lost everything. Why would Sharper care so much about some random kid? Love child. Rumor has it, old Sharper sowed some wild oats. That explains the way Eris treats him. Poor Solomon. How did you find all this out? A good reporter never reveals her sources, Luca. Am I doing the same voice for Dawn that I do for Beck? Nah, sounds different to me. Okay, good. All of a sudden, everything sounds the same to me. And... <laughs> mm. Hey, can you go the other way? I think so. I'd okay. better not dilly-dally. Gotta get to the treehouse. Fair enough. That is true, we are a bit late. Very. Hmm. Run, 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 run. Town is so quiet. Ooh. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. Oh. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Rough. Hey, you should go to bed. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's been raining. The book will still be here. He met his old friend's eyes and was greeted with nothing but ice cold anger. Heavens, this is no time for fractured friendships. Right on. Get some sleep. Good to know what we're in for, though, I guess. Excuse me, what are you doing? Just locking up for the night, sir. Oh, wonderful. I can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. Um, not 
Not exactly, sir. The storm set us back a bit, and it's go getting late, so we all decided to... You all decided? Y yes, sir. I was unaware that your job involved deciding things. We are all here at Perennial Harvest because we believe in creating a better future, yes? Y yes, sir, very much, sir. Do you want to be the one to tell this town that we failed them? N no. That we gave up because there was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy? Uh, of course not, sir. Good. Then it's decided. Yes, sir. We'll work until the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. Ooh. Hmm. It's a couple of creepy voices to have to do back to back. <laughs> the Still house. Don't see which which sign they changed, but. Oh yeah, me either. Rolo, are you still up there? I'm sorry, Rolo isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back never. Luca had only ever uh -oh. heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. You're upset. Oh, what makes you say that? Maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason? You've been giving his family more of us, like, a southern accent, which I like, so I need to... Oh. I feel like I should shift him to have a little bit more of that, too. No, he was perfect. I don't know if it... Well, we'll see. I didn't abandon you. I'm just a little late. Rolo scoffed. The rain held me up. Liar! You weren't even home. What? The storm got bad and I got worried, so I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house, and you weren't there. Oh. I hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... That storm rolled in out of nowhere. I got stuck before dinner at Beck's house. Luca ha stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. <laughs> Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she'd made new friends. New friends. I spent all day waiting for you, and you were off making new friends? It's not like that, Rolo. You know, while I was waiting, I made some upgrades to mission control. It was gonna be a surprise, but you look, but you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. Mm. Just like you knocked down our friendship. What does that even mean? Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. It means you're a bad friend. You don't care about me. Of course I care, you ass. I knew I'd get in trouble waiting so late for you, but I kept my word, because that's what friends do. Oh, wow, what a noble sacrifice you made. Easy for you to say. Your grand doesn't even care. <gasps> you can stay out as long as you want, and you wouldn't even get in trouble. Seriously? You're acting like I chose this? If that's what you think, then maybe you're the bad friend. Rolo's tone changed to a calm, yet more intense anger. Maybe Pa's right. Storms bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your Pa's nonsense like it means anything. Yeah, well, at least my Pa's still around. <gasps> the words hung in the cold night air. Rolo's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. Luca, I... Good night, Rolo. Oof. Dang it. That friend jealousy, though. Indeed. That, like, possessiveness of being a kid and not knowing how to handle your friend having a new friend. It kicked in very strong very fast. It did. It did. Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. But Rolo's been doing a lot of emotional support for Luca. True. Even though he's pretty... Um, young and inexperienced for it. Mm-hmm. And that's probably put a big strain on their friendship where it's like, 
he's not been getting back from Luca what he wants mm. in their friendship because he's had that. to do so much for Luca. That'd yeah. be my guess. Rolo, what a jerk. Meh. Call me a bad friend. Ooh, I'm Rolo. Look at me and my amazing family. Mm. It's fun to kick. Eh. It looks fun to kick. Meh. Can I kick it out of the room? Ooh. Probably can not. You? But can yeah. You? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Seems like it always goes up to the top and bounces off the door jam. Indeed. All right. I guess I'm just never supposed to make new friends. We're getting more charms to work with. But such sad ones. Mm hmm. Luca? Gran cooed gently from the hallway. You slept straight through black breakfast. Luca, are you all right? I'm fine. Just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. I've got to run out and take care of some things. Okay. I'll be back later to check in. Sure. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. They are like 12 going on 13. True. Like, this is actually more appropriate for their age than I'd really been thinking. I was, they're so cute. They look so little. It's easy to think of them as like eight or 10. Yeah. But. What time of year is it right now? Uh, Summer. Right. I was wondering. The, it's like, like should, second or third day. We're not supposed summer. to be in school or anything. Okay. Nah. No. I bet Rolo's still going to be go to the festival. He's going to be miserable. If Rolo thinks I'm still going to the festival with him, he can shove it. Oh, buddy. Hmm, what else can we do? I don't know if we can go back to bed, but... Poor, poor boy having a hard day. Poor little fellow. Luca dozed off again. Luca! I see you still didn't eat your oatmeal. Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave a sandwich here, too. Thanks. Rolo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. So your plan is to just sit in your room all day? Pretty much. Well, I need to pop away for again for a minute. If you decide to end your pity party and go outside, I think it'd do you some good. Noted. Lucas still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. Yeah. I'm just kicked the ball some more. There's never anything interesting at the festival anyway. I'm actually terrified now about what's going on at the festival. You're supposed to kick the ball up there. I think you might be right. Knock a book down. Meh. Oh, hang on. Nope, nope. Ah! Do, 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 do. Ha! Yes. The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Oh, it's the Rolo's favorite series. The complete first volume. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rolo had received it for his birthday. A special hardcover edition with behind-the-scenes commentary and bonus art. Rolo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rolo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Hmm. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind. But it had stayed right there where Rolo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, 
but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Luca! Another little friend came to see you. A girl named Beck. How was her name said? I think Moodwell. Moodwell? She said you met yesterday. Well, what did she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh. She seems nice. Yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? It's your mm room, too. Maybe later. Huh. All righty, then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table. In case you want a bite before bedtime. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Oh, buddy. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. I actually like that she does. She Leaves wants to respect his space. his space and let him yeah. have it. Which is probably also why she opts to sleep downstairs a lot. Now that I think about it. I suspect that that's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she also needs her space. She's an adult woman. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, but she has to know how difficult it is. He right. looked up at his father standing beside him. And she's also being very respectful by not sleeping in his parents' space. That as well, yeah. Like, she could have stepped in and just, like, taken over his mom's room. Yeah, that's very true. And that wouldn't have felt good either. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. Mm -hmm. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, Make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame, see? Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Uh -oh. Luca's own face looked back at him. What? Older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, Dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames in a flash of cold light. He was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Hmm. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. 
Mm -hmm. Mom? No, dear. It's only Gran. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his Gran came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? It, I, I don't feel like talking. That's just as well. How about you sit there and listen a bit? Whatever you and Rolo thought about doesn't matter. But he... Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights happen, but fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. The important thing is, it's not the last thing you'll ever say to each other. But he said stuff about Dad. Well, do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Mm hmm. And did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. One must appreciate friends in their best moments and accept them in their worst. Oh. Now get your little bit. Well, I can't read. It happens some days. Now get your little butt out of bed. The festival's today. You don't want to miss that, do you? I guess not. I thought it was yesterday. Seems like a good opportunity to make some amends with Rolo, doesn't it? Luca gave a reluctant nod. So buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that... What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Got some last minute festival business to take care of. I'll come find you at the fountain a little after lunch. All right. I love you, Luca. Love you too. Luca took a deep breath. Okay. Where'd your soccer ball go? Chapter she took six. your soccer ball away. <laughs> Through thick and thin. Despite Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Yeah. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. We should, though. I do also kind of want to see if they'll let us... Go see your dad's spot? That's a good idea, I think. If they'll let us. Oh, I suppose they'll let us, but maybe there's not anything to do. Yeah. It's nice that we can go, though. Yeah. Just any time, really. Okay, let's find friend. Rolo! There you are! Luca, Rolo wanted me to tell you something. What is it? Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. <sighs> A space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If ye be brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh, Roxy, I, I don't... It's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find him. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Look, I know you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. So I'm doing him this one favor. Now I need one favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two, squash it. Okay. A space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If you be brave, go somewhere quiet. Library, somewhere I'm thinking. quiet. Yep. Yep. Because that's where he goes to read Hank Atomics in the morning. Yep, yep. When they first come out. But I'm sure he can wait while we talk to everyone. Oh, yes. Everyone. So many people. Unique New York. Unique New York. Why did you make me do that? Huh? 
Oh, don't mind me. Just warming up for my big ceremony speech. Mr. Kerr pointed to his grinning mouth. Gotta limber up the old gab box. You nervous? Oh, heavens no. Well, break a leg. Give me the gift of something. I didn't see it. Yeah, I was a little fast. How goes the beetle hunt? Pretty rotten. I haven't seen so much as an... Exuvii? Exuvii. And it's not just the beetles. This morning, I couldn't find any critters at all. It's like everything that buzzes or skitters just packed up and left. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Maybe all the commotion of the festival just spooked them. Yeah, maybe that's it. Hopefully. I didn't get that voice right either. Welcome to our... Oh, wait. Welcome to our festival. Don't forget to come back later for Mr. Kerr's speech. And the Perennial Harvest Festival sign reveal. You don't want to miss it. That part I don't want to miss, because I'm curious. Right? Um, it's another one of you. Bet he'd say the same exact thing if he could talk. Probably. I don't know who Perennial Harvest thinks they are impressing with this... Oh, I don't know who Perennial Harvest thinks they're impressing with this ridiculous festival. Totally. The town's still falling apart. The weather's still cruddy. And the season's harvest looks like it's going to be worse than last year's. You said it. No amount of corporate pandering is going to change any of that. Exactly. But... The lemonade at the drink stand over there does look pretty tasty. Fitz. I'm still going to be mad at them. I'd just rather be mad while sipping some delicious lemonade is all. That's sensible. Yeah. Well, you haven't budged, but I don't think that's concerning them. <laughs> they just decorated him. Mm-hmm. Ain't moving. <laughs> Does Fitz say anything separate from Roxy? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I thought I saw a pop-up, but it was the chill pop-up. What happens if we do that now? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Just zooms in. Yep. Cute. Gives us the option, I guess. Jeff was staring into the distance with a wistful look. Hey, Jeff. Everything all right? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Everything's fine. I mean, it used to be fine. Oh. Just ain't right these days, you know? I really do, actually. Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow then gave an understanding nod. You do, don't you? For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. (laughs) (laughs) Aw. Well. (laughs) Every single time. Yup. Wait for it. Unexplained sound once again noted. Like clockwork. What a bunch of drones. <laughs> yup. Yup. Goodness, so many to talk to. Yeah. A most welcoming of welcomes. Would you like to share your thoughts? We always strive to improve. Nope. This is the first time I've seen this many smiling faces since the fowl harvest. I had my doubts about perennial harvest, but I must admit they do put on a nice party. There are streamers and some balloons. I will give them that. Right? Like, yes, they did decorate. So, any foreshadowing? No. Aww. Keep your secrets. Piper, you're actually taking a break from studying. I don't remember which of us did this one. I don't I, either. It might have been... I think this one was you. I wanted to see the, what all the fest... Oh, does it have to be me? Nope, I, I can can't do. read! A, I wanted to see what all the festival fuss was about. But I can't help but notice you still brought your backpack full of books. 
Luca, backpacks can carry a lot more than just books. True, true. So what you got in there? Books. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to return the perennial harvest safety suit you borrowed. I don't think anyone noticed. Good. Now will you tell me what you needed it for? It was a favor for an enemy of my enemy. <laughs> this isn't gonna harm Mr. Kerr, is it? All you need to know is that it's for the good of the family. Ooh. Ominous. Where is library? I think it's behind Mum. Oh, oh, wait, no, no, it's there. I have found the library. The library, somewhere quiet. Yes. Probably upstairs, if I had to guess. How are you? Or hiding in the back somewhere. Hi, Jace. Still working through the newest Hank Atomic? You know it. Some fascinating canon towards the end. Did you know Hank Atomic's shrink array doesn't technically shrink stuff? It uses inverse quantum particle decay to literally grow the entire universe around an object, leaving that object unaltered. So it just looks shrunk compared to everything else? Bingo. That's wild. But Jace, no spoilers, please. Oh, right. Sorry. That's wildly improbable. It, and impractical, it feels like. Look. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Boring. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> um, wait. Goody. Hey, Luca. Kato's eyes lit with excitement. I've been expecting you. Bravo on deciphering the first riddle. We did it. Hooray. The first. Oh, you didn't think that was all, did you? Rolo does go all out, doesn't he? Kato straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Ahem. <coughs> On planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Kato stared at Luca eagerly. Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay. Let me figure it out. All right. When you find it, bring it here to be verified. And if you decide you want a hint, the offer still stands. On Planet Farpool, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. It'll be upstairs. Because that's where all the comic books are. And if you're talking about issues, it's going to be... That is true. It's going to be one of them, I bet. Or, like, I'm wondering if it's another place in town. But it could be... If it's in here, then yeah, you're probably right. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number five, from the shelf. Once you've got a... Wait. Glibby! Once you've got a book, you can bring it here to me. Or just grab a different one. I knew I wasn't doing the voice quite right, <laughs> but it's hard to keep. Yeah, some voices are that way. I mean, it's, it's the fifth one. Yeah, that's kind of like what I'm assuming. When the fifth king dies. When the fifth king dies... And we've got issue number five here, mm -hmm. but... Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number four, from the shelf. No idea which one's the right one. We could just take them both down there? I suppose so, because, yeah, I can't interact with other ones now. Let's see... Oh! Luca grabbed Natural Photography, volume five, <laughs> oh. from the shelf. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Luca no. Luca grabbed The Modern Science of Atomic Radiation from the shelf. We're going to just walk up there with a stack of books. Planet Farpool, Fifth King. Luca grabbed the five pillars of success from the shelf. Luca grabbed the issue with self-help, <laughs> a helpful guide from the shelf. Mm. Luca grabbed 500 meals for one big pot from the shelf. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I have a lot of books. has to be one of these. What are you reading? Lovely. I might steal it. <laughs> I have every book. Let's see what we have here. 500 meals for one big pot. Libby, nope, I'm afraid that's not the correct book. Okay, here's a hint. The words I emphasize are important. On planet Farpool, you may take issue... 
When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Fifth issue. Thank you, Kato. Yeah, we, we figured it out, but now we can't. Now I just have every book is the problem. <laughs> just work our way slowly through the stack. Pretty much, because it's at the bottom. Um. Oh, no. Oh, dear. They're on the second floor of the library, right? Oh, dear. Maybe if I walk out and come back. Maybe. I can tell you one thing. It's not out there. What you need to find is inside the library somewhere. Right, but I have... Rolo went to so much work to make all these rhyming hints and clues. That's true. I guess we gave him a whole day. Um. How do we... How do we... Reset? Um. Hmm. Ooh. I guess we could do that if we had to. Feels like we're supposed Luca to be able to. The oh. Oh. What? Luca oh, the okay. The pop ups aren't there anymore. Issue. Seems but like they should be, but. The same ones. Yeah. Here we go. Ah, you found it! Kato removed his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book mm. under the purple light, two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue 5. Wow. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rolo's cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that. <laughs> and only I had the special flashlight needed to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for this light bulb. Parted with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, Rolo. Libby, now let's see here. Kato began flipping through the pages. Sorry, you can't when he hit hit the voice word. unless I do that. Get away with such a grift? He continued flipping. Only found in. Rub. Cart? Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. That's it. Grift in. Grub cart? Griffin Griffin. Griffin's grub cart! He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand. Ah, brilliant! I guess you're off then. Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt! Thanks, Kato. Or Kato, I've forgotten. I think it's <laughs> Kato. But we'll continue the rest of the scavenger hunt next time. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you next week for more of this delightful Beacons Pines. Goodbye! Goodbye!